We are so excited to welcome you to our webinar, Building a Routine with ListenWise to Boost Learning. Love seeing folks from all over the world on this call. Amazing. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started with some introductions. Uh, great to meet you. My name is Karis Whitna, and I am joining you all from Denver, Colorado. I'm on the ListenWise team. And prior to being at ListenWise, I was an elementary school teacher and school leader. And here's a picture of me with my partner uh, out in Kauai. So we just love the outdoors. It's a little bit about me. And I'm very grateful to have Leah joining us. So uh, Leah, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. Hi, my name is Leah Palmquist. I teach um, at the Spire Benjamin Holt College Prepper Academy, <laughs> long name, in Stockton, California. Um, this is my family, minus my oldest daughter, who wasn't with us on the trip this summer, um, in one of our happy, or my happy place, which is Yosemite National Park. So I've been teaching Spanish, um, introductory Spanish, for over 25 years, and then have started teaching English language development for the past four years. Um, and like I said, uh, those are three of my four kids. Awesome. Thanks so much, Leah. Uh, so before I found ListenWise, um, I'll tell you a little bit about my story to just to ListenWise, and then uh, Leah will share her story. Uh, I was a, a school administrator at the time, and I was curious to learn more about ed tech and uh, just professionally make that shift in my life. And I learned about ListenWise through a job fair. And when I heard um, my now boss talk about ListenWise, I was like, wait, something like this exists. There is a resource out there where students are engaging with authentic and relevant podcast-based content in the classroom. I had no idea anything like ListenWise was out there. I I uh, found myself when I was teaching elementary, creating those listening stations for my students, um, spending hours trying to find audio content that they would find engaging. So I was really intrigued to learn more. And I was also just really excited about all of the scaffolds and supports that are provided within the platform. So that's a little bit of my journey to ListenWise. And now I'm really fortunate and lucky to work with educators across the world in uh, bringing ListenWise to their schools um, and their districts. And I'll kick it over to Leah. Um, yeah, I first um, started teaching ELD about four years ago. And one of the ELD teachers in Southern California had told me of everything you can do if you do listen wise, I have found that the students who do it consistently are raising their listening comprehension scores on the LPAC. So the LPAC is the test that English learners take to show that they are English fluent or at least tell their English um, language level. And so once she told me that we got it for our school and then the more and more I learn about ListenWise and I feel like I'm still learning more, I love it even more. And, and we're gonna get to it in a little bit, but once I saw the data and how um, kind of like Harris was saying that um, there's so much done for you that you don't have to do all that like prep work in getting these lessons ready. Um, and then the data to to guide that, um, I was I was sold. Great. And if you're totally new to ListenWise, um, we're going to start off with today's agenda on an intro to ListenWise. So you'll have a chance to learn more there. And then you're going to have some practical ideas for how to implement ListenWise within your classroom. So we're going to explore how educators in Vista USD implement ListenWise in the classroom. We're going to learn from Leah. Um, our expert on the call about how she incorporates ListenWise in the classroom. And then you're going to walk away with some practical tips to start using ListenWise in your classroom tomorrow. Um, so let's jump in by learning more about ListenWise. So um, ListenWise, we have more than 3,000 lessons um, that connect to what you're teaching across all subject areas. Um, so these lessons have podcasts and videos for grades two through 12. 
And uh, these lessons range in length from 30 seconds to five minutes to 12 minutes. Um, we have lessons for English language development, English language arts, social studies, STEM, and current events. And all of our lessons are engaging and relevant, and they feature authentic voices that are going to hook your students and keep them engage engaged. Um, all lessons have built-in scaffolds and options to differentiate for student needs, and we really think about how to reach our students at all levels of English language proficiency. Um, and we're fortunate to partner with a whole bunch of different podcasting sources for our content. So you hear from a lot of different voices for your students. Um, and the learning goals of using our multimodal lessons are as follows. So we really believe in teaching content and language together. Um, our lessons have really robust vocabulary and academic language within them. Um, and all of our lessons are targeting language and literacy skills together. So we're working on all domains of literacy, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. And through our lessons, we're supporting and building student background knowledge. We have content that is really relevant to what you're learning in the curriculum day in and day out. And our content, we have so many different lessons out there that are speaking to the development of social emotional learning skills, critical thinking skills, um, really thinking about our students as the whole incredible people that they are and get, providing teachers with lessons and content that feels relevant to support your students in developing stronger social emotional skills and critical thinking skills. Um, then um, in the classroom, there's a lot of different ways that teachers are building lesson-wise into their routine to work on listening, reading, writing, and speaking. So with listening, um, with listen-wise, you're able to listen to authentic podcasts with dialogic exchange and nuanced dictation and syntax within all the different podcasts. For reading, um, we have a transcript that students have. So it's like karaoke starts happening and students can read along and that is gonna support with their reading comprehension and their comprehension of the story. And then for writing, uh, within the platform, there's different comprehension questions that students can respond to after they've listened to the podcast. And you as the teacher have the opportunity to provide feedback on your students' writing. Um, and then with speaking, uh, I think about our stories and one of our stories uh, that comes to mind is the most expensive French fry. Um, and it, within that lesson, I just think about how excited students can get speaking about how much they would spend on a French fry and how ridiculous is it that in New York, there's French fries that you can buy for $300. Um, so just with speaking our lessons, we're constantly embedding discussion questions uh, to support academic discourse. Um, so all of these different skills are being worked on within the classroom with ListenWise. And uh, there's so many different ways with those 3,000 lessons that you would have access to on the platform uh, to incorporate them within your instruction. So these are just four ideas, and we're going to hear a lot more from educators about other ideas and how they are incorporating ListenWise in the classroom. But the first one that I can think of um, is to use a ListenWise lesson to start your class off. Um, this can look like a five to 10 minute uh, instructional exercise. So uh, you can have students walk in and they have a weird news story ready to go, um, just something to get them hooked and excited for uh, with their learning. And then the next idea is this Friday feature or Wednesday feature or Tuesday feature, really this idea that within your week, you can build a routine of having a day where students know that, oh, on Fridays, I always get to hear a lesson wise story. Um, so that's one thing we see a lot of our teachers doing. Um, the next idea is as enrichment. So let's say you are finding yourself teaching a unit aligned to your state standards um, and the core content that is being taught is around ancient civilizations. So you decide to pull from a listen wise uh, lesson and to help supplement what you're learning. Um, and then independent choice. There's so many podcasts that students can work on independently um, within the platform. So those are just some different ideas about how to build ListenWise into your classroom routine. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, next, I'm going to talk about how you can use ListenWise with 
data. So we know that you're making instructional decisions every day based on what you're seeing um, from your students. And with ListenWise, we have different quizzes and assignments that you can use to then inform your instruction. Um, so on the next slide, what you're seeing um, is going to be an overview of how you can see student progress over time with ListenWise. So you can use this to help inform your instruction. And I'm going to put a pin in this because later Leah is going to go way into more depth about how uh, she uses ListenWise and the data from our quizzes to inform instruction. So we'll get there. Um, but right now we're going to switch to listening to uh, two educators out in uh, California Vista, at Via Vista USD. Amy and Claire, and we're going to hear how they build ListenWise into their classroom routines. 15 to 20 minutes on it once a week. And the great um, thing about it is we just have a set day with our kids, so they know what day they're doing ListenWise. And when they come into class, we have the picture on the screen, just the picture of what today's podcast is about. So it sparks their interest and they come in and then it's like, okay, what do you think today's podcast is about? Just what do you see? And they start talking about what they see and they get all excited. What do you think about it? What's the mood of this picture? How does it make you feel? Um, why are you saying that? Find context for what you're saying. And they'll talk about, if it's a picture of a gorilla, they'll talk about where in the world we might find that gorilla before we segue into the Jane Goodall lesson. Whatever topic kids are, are um, working on, whether it's graffiti or whether it's animals in captivity or whatever it might be, Teachers can go into ListenWise and search for those topics, and I used it for the last two years and was always able to find podcasts that tie in perfectly with any subject. Often it came up in current events, which made it more interesting for kids because it's relevant, because it's it's happening, you know, in recent times. In the beginning of the year, it was a lot of hand-holding. We did the first three to four lessons all together as a class projected it on the board um, with the language supports in terms of the text. In the beginning, it was taking 20, 25 minutes. But now after we go over that introductory picture, it's on their agenda and they know to knock it out in less than 15 minutes. I've been using ListenWise with Fidelity weekly since the beginning of the school year. And my favorite thing is that it does mirror the LPAC questioning um, pretty identically in terms of the reading portion of the test. I also really love it because we are still dealing with COVID learning loss. And so when we look at those ELD lessons and we do use the linked resources there, including the videos, it's providing background content that we would have given in the class and weren't able to do. So it's, it's not just for ELD kids. The ELD lessons are written in such a way that the scaffolding is intense for learning loss. Um, when I was using ListenWise, it didn't have, they didn't have those ELD videos yet. And I love them that they've been added. They're fantastic. But what I did with on the teacher version, you can pull up the picture. And then as you scroll down, there's a whole paragraph that gives you an intro, some background on the podcast. And I would have the kids, we would go through and read that out loud together. And so then talk about like, you know, okay, so do we understand what the podcast is going to be about before the kids dive in? On the quizzes, the four questions, the first one is usually one that says, um, it's, some, it's a question they have to listen to get the answer to. Like, at what age did so-and-so go to his first lighthouse? You know, and so they, they, we read that ahead, like, all right, what are we listening for? And that really helps them get ready for the LPAC test where they have to know the questions ahead of time so that they can be listening for what they're supposed to answer. The second question is always, um, there's always a main idea question. What's the main idea? and it gives them an excerpt again. It, there's always a question defining vocabulary and context, and there's always an inference question, and which we know inference is a huge skill that they need to be working on. Over time, you do want to remove the transcript because we're getting it ready for the LPAC test as you get further into the year. And when you remove the transcript, it also removes the option for it to be slower. Um, so they'll be getting the full speed because on the LPAC, they can't slow down the audio either. So as they get more comfortable with it, you want to remove that and practice it together as a whole class and then on their own so that they're just having to listen, just like on the LPAC test. Also, this using this program and being able to pause and replay lends itself to that LPAC accommodation of giving kids the pause and replay option on the listening test. If they are using this routinely 
in their practice in class, then that would support us giving them that pause and replay option on the listening portion of the test. Awesome, thank you. Um, so in the spirit of we what we just learned um, about ideas for how you might build ListenWise into your classroom routine, um, let's say that you were to teach this lesson to your st students. One idea is that you could show them this picture when they walk into your class, when they know it's your Friday ListenWise day. Um, and this picture is already there, ready to go for you within the lesson. So you don't need to go and find it. It's already in there in a lesson wise lesson. So you could show them this picture and ask the question, what do you think today's story is about? And then thinking about also what Amy and Claire shared, you can use a picture to then ask students, um, how does this picture make you feel? Uh, pick a word that you think describes this photo just for them to start to connect with the story they're about to listen to. So go ahead and respond to uh, this question. Then another idea from Amy and Claire is that you can use uh, at the top of our lessons, there's always going to be those pictures that you were just seeing and this uh, short description. And that covers what you're about to listen to within the podcast. So it helps to preview content with your students and helps prime them so they're ready um, to engage in the vocabulary they're about to hear within the story. And then here um, is really that piece that Amy and Claire were speaking to of the example questions um, that are present within our quizzes that support with um, be it test prep uh, where they are in California and that test that they were speaking to um, for folks in other states, that's like, that might be like your access assessment if you're in a WIDA state. Um, so really just different formats and ways of assessing listening for our students. So um, here's one of those example questions that our quizzes have ready to go. And then I will kick it over to Leah to share um, what this looks like within your classroom. Yeah, I had wanted to just kind of give a little background of the students that I teach too. I forgot to mention that earlier, but I teach ELD, but I teach at a high school where there are only about maybe I think 16 to 17 English learners still in high school, but all of them have been in the States since kindergarten. So they have taken the LPAC for now, you know, nine, 10 years and they still have not passed it. And so they really are the life lifelong, you know, lifetime learners or long-term learners um, of English. And so their, um, their stamina in reading is very, it's very low. Like they just oftentimes what I found is like, you know, they just refuse to read at first, first of all. And so I'll get into that a little bit, but with listen wise, they can, they can listen and it takes a little of that lift off. And, um, and so I just had kind of wanted to let you know how I use it and what students, um, but last year we were working on specific skills of using context for vocabulary and inference. And so I realized as I was going through different listen wise um, questions that they're also like for each one of them, they have these types of questions, as you can see, that really are self-contained. So obviously main idea, they would need to read the whole thing. Um, for the, the questions about like what happened in the reading, but for the context and vocabulary, it gives this example that you wouldn't necessarily have to read the whole thing or listen to the whole thing to be able to focus on this skill. So um, for this one, you know, is an example of the vocabulary one and it takes a segment of it. But again, for my readers who need to work on context skills, but are gonna be worn out from listening or reading to a whole, you know, few minute thing, they can practice that skill. And if you wanna go to the next one, I believe that was the inference. Perfect. And this was actually my favorite because it's just difficult to find resources for inference that really are similar to those like standardized texting or test tests for English learners. And so this is what I did is I would take multiple inference questions from different stories and have them practice um, even just um, individually these questions. So again, it has the, the paragraph right there. You don't need the whole other part for that. Um, so if you want to take a specific skill and work on it, they have all of these um, embedded in their quizzes. Um, so here's just an example of the data. As you can see, I 
focus on the ones with that have the pre-done multiple choice quizzes. I've also done ones in the past where they have written, but I find as a teacher, like going back and making sure you give feedback on all of them, um, this gives them immediate feedback. And so this is one of my um, students. As you can see, it gives, it breaks down like the literal questions, the vocabulary, the main idea and inference. So the more that they take, I can see, okay, the student needs to focus on main idea. That is what he's missing. Even inference, he only has one question in inference that he got right, um, but might need to work um, on that as well. But to me, this was so wonderful to show them. So I would call the student up and say, hey, look at your data. Um, look at what, you know, what areas do you think we need to practice and what do you need to focus on? And they were able to see it and then go back. And when they got to those questions, you know, kind of take that extra time. Um, you can go to the next one because it's just a similar page. Um, so again, this is just another student who a little bit lower on the main idea. And it's also color coded, as you can see, if it's red, it, you know, it's the lowest um, green means they're, you're doing great. And yellow is like, they're right in the middle. So again, I use this data, not just for myself, but also to show students, hey, you're really good at vocabulary. You know, you really know how to use context clues. Great job, you know, give them the, um, the encouragement, but also, okay, let's work on main idea. Like we're gonna have this, you know, some, some tests on this and practice. This is what, if you want, you know, to pass the LPAC, which my students do, then they know what they can focus on. I'm trying to think if there was anything else, Karis, from these. Um, oh, maybe one other thing, because I don't think I have another slide, is um, I was talking about the stamina of reading. I love that you can have the script. Um, and so I feel like for my level learners, they have the script and they listen. So they're not only hearing the words in context and how they're spoken, but it is taking a little of that lift off of we can practice inference and we can practice main idea without it being just solely reading, which is just, again, that just it exhausts them oftentimes. Um, and so I really love that. And I love the idea of like bringing that away, but for, for this time, sometimes two of my students will choose just to read it. And that's another thing, like even though it's listen wise, you can use it as reading comprehension as well, because really those skills are the same um, with whether you're listening or um, reading. Um, thanks so much, Leah. I, I think it was just, your reflection there is just so powerful around how you're thinking about using the transcript with your students and how you're teaching um, reading comprehension within listen wise and thinking about listening comprehension and the intersection of both together to support your students and where they're at and how at different points in within your school year and depending on the student you um, are building routines with ListenWise that are really customized to the students you're working with, right? To the student population that you have. Um, and I'm just so incredibly grateful for how you're thinking about that. And I just want to name, I'm really grateful for all of our teachers that are on this call that are joining, really trying to think about you're taking time out of your day. Probably you might've just ended your school day. Maybe it's dinner time for you and you're joining us to try to think about how to build routines and for your students. So they find, um, you know, more joy in school. And I uh, just want to thank you for everything that you all do uh, to support our kids. Um, so to come back to this slide that we had talked about at the beginning, I just want to give you some ideas for some podcasts you can use to start your class off with, uh, the, at a podcast idea for a Friday feature, um, enrichment and independent choice. Uh, so we, starting class off, we have, this is one example of our weird news stories, uh, the rare green puppy that was born. Um, and you'll see that with all of our stories, there's this vocabulary section. So you can see what vocab is going to be within the story. And to start your class off, um, you'll see the next slide. Um, so this idea that you can play a weird news story is that thought and the story typically they're offbeat stories and they're going to grab and hold your students att attention um you can use these stories to review the vocabulary words you can replay the stories to really build um content knowledge with them um and those are just the vocabulary words for that 
uh, green puppy story. And then you can ask students to respond orally or in writing to the listening comprehension and discussion questions to further the learning. Um, so that's one idea for a bell ringer you could use. And then the next one, a Friday feature. Um, this one I think about for, and that last story, you could use it for elementary, middle, um, you could use it for high school, but I think probably more in the elementary and middle space for that last one. Um, this one, more middle high school, how to overcome FOMO, um, just speaking to our students' lives and, uh, what they're living day in and day out, uh, you can go to the next slide, um, you can set aside a regular weekly session where students can listen to and discuss a podcast together. We are always coming out with new current event stories. So um, there's always going to be content that's relevant to your students' lives. Uh, you can project that interactive transcript on a screen if you're teaching um, in an in-person setting or on your computer if teaching remotely um, for students to follow along to. And then after listening, you can always check for understanding by asking students to submit written responses to the comprehension questions and or take the autocorrected quiz. And um, you can also ask students to consider the discussion questions in pairs, small groups, or as a class. I so just want to name those discussion questions are already written for you. Um, so you do not need to come up with them. Um, they're ready to go uh, right there within the ListenWise lesson plan. And then for enrichment, um, let's say you have a, less, a unit coming up around ancient civilization. It's aligned to your state standards. Um, here is an example of how I might pull a ListenWise lesson that corresponds directly maybe to the textbook that my students are reading about. Um, it would be this Mayans and the history of chocolate. Um, so you can browse uh, ListenWise for podcasts and find standards aligned lessons that match your curriculum. Um, you'll see that there are standards within the lesson plan. So uh, we're always responsive to where you're coming from, where your state's coming from. And you can use the teacher's guide to structure before, during, and after listening activities and ask students to take the auto-corrected quiz um, and know that the before, during, and after listening activities, there's always points where we're calling out different differentiation opportunities, scaffolds for students. So always a bunch of ideas in there for how to meet all of the diverse learners that are within your classroom. Um, and beside improving listening skills, uh, you can pair ListenWise lessons with your curriculum, and that can help reinforce key concepts build vocab vocabulary, and allow students to draw connections between the curriculum and the broader world. Um, so as they think about eating that bar of chocolate, um, they then can think about the history of chocolate um, from that lesson that I shared. So it just can make it meaningful for, for your students in their lives. Uh, and then the next slide is all about independent choice. Um, I picked a story that I love because I think it's really fascinating and kind of funny to learn about the science of snot. Um, and teachers find this to be a, an independent choice story that students enjoy, um, where they learn more about the science of snot and which animals produce the most slime. Uh, and with independent choice, uh, we can go to the next slide. Um, you can allow students to select stories that interest them, and this can boost engagement, especially in remote and hybrid learning. And then you can also offer students a list of 10 or so stories from which they can choose from as a teacher. So that's one idea. Um, or you can let students select any story from a specific collection that includes a quiz. So on the platform, we have lessons. There's a section where you can see different collections, and those are really robust collections. Um, I think about one around elementary SEL. So you can go in there, find all of these stories and uh, really target your ins instruction around that thematic idea or unit. Um, and then after students listen and complete and monitor their progress over time on four key listening skills, like what we learned from Leah and how her students are really owning, all right, maybe I need to work a little bit more on main idea or whatever it might be within the classroom. Um, so to help get you started, uh, these are some of the top 
teacher favorites from this past school year that teachers now are teaching. So um, you'll just see here that there's so many different content topics that we cover uh, on the platform. So everything from the rotting pumpkin mystery um, to stories about Frankenstein. Um, so uh, yeah, Leah, I would love to hear kind of some ways that you use uh, Listen Wise in your class and stories that have resonated with your students. Um, one of the things I've done is a checklist. So the class I have is more of a support class. It's it's ELD, but I also help them with other subjects. So sometimes I can't be one-on-one -on -one or doing direct instruction. And so what I've done is had like a checklist where they needed to do two a week. And then I would post it on Google Classroom for them. So they could go on to Google Classroom um, at their own time. And then they just knew it would be due by Friday. And then on the Friday, you know, then we would, we would have two a week. So that was one way that we built it into routine. And then the other way was just to do it kind of at a, as a class, um, you know, once a week where we would pre do the questions. I thought that was a really good thing that they said in the video of really letting them see the questions on the teacher version. Cause on the kids version, they don't see it, but you can, as a teacher version, project what the question is. So they know ahead of time what they're going into. And then the last thing of like my favorite podcast probably are the science ones because um, I found at least in the California LPAC, which is the, the English um, proficiency test, they focus so much on science. And a lot of my students have not, they don't take science as a um, freshman. Um, and so exposing them to the scientific just ideas and terms um, in listen wise helps them as they get to the LPAC and might, you know, come into you know, find one of those concepts and it gives them a little of that. So I usually do try to pick a science based story because I, I see it tends to mirror the, um, the LPAC. Awesome. Thanks so much. Um, and as uh, you are listening to this, thinking about how you might use ListenWise within your classroom um, to help get you started, I'm just going to share right now in the chat the blog that has these different podcasts to help get you started. So you can use that um, for your instruction. There it is. Okay, I think I sent it to everyone. Cool. Um, so thank you just so much for coming, Leah. Thank you so much for your valuable insight. Um, from here, we're happy to take any questions and uh, yeah, go from there. <laughs>